In this video, I want to show you a very simple practical to demonstrate the diode characteristic. So before we start, just as a little bit of a recap, in some of our previous videos, we've mentioned the diode characteristic. And we said that as the voltage across the diode increases, well, I've called that VD, the voltage across the diode, the current that flows through the diode exhibits a characteristic that looks something like this. We have this sort of curved shape. And what happens is we reach a certain voltage, uh, in our case, around 0.6 or 0.7 volts, which we call the activation voltage. And we said that at that voltage, the current then starts to increase. Nothing much happens before that voltage. We reach that activation voltage and then we get an increase in current. And we've seen that um, explained in some of our previous videos. And we also showed it in a simulation as well. I want to show it in a practical and a very simple practical that doesn't involve many components or anything complicated. What we would normally do, especially when we had the simulation, is we used um, a voltage sweep where we increased the voltage gradually and we could see that, that current characteristic there. Let's suppose that we don't have any fancy um, power supplies with variable voltage or anything like that. We've just got a simple battery. How are we going to demonstrate this characteristic? Well, fortunately, it's nice and easy. We only need um, a couple of components. We need, well, I say a resistor. We'll need a range of resistors and a diode. And providing we've got access to some different resistors and a diode, we can go ahead and take some results and hopefully demonstrate this characteristic in this video. So to do that, I'm going to assemble a very simple circuit. And that circuit is just these two components. We have our voltage supply, um, which is going to be a 9-volt battery in this case. And that's going to be connected to two components. We've got a resistor and we've got our diode. That's our circuit essentially and we're going to build that on our breadboard here. Uh, in a previous video we talked about breadboards. If you're not familiar with building a circuit on a breadboard we talked about um, breadboards and what they involve. But we're going to go ahead and assume that you've watched that or you're already familiar with breadboards. We're going to create a very simple circuit from the top rail We've got our resistor. That resistor I'm going to take down uh, to here. And then from that same row, our diode is going to go to the negative rail. Obviously, diodes are semiconducting. Uh, we've got to have it in forward bias rather than reverse bias. How do we know which is which? It does depend on the diode. Um, the diode that I've got here, um, it should be visible in the video. But for most diodes, what you'll find is... At the negative end, um, which is here, there's a slight um, stripe on the body of the diode. I'm hoping you can see that, or whether it's that it's in focus, but there's a stripe on one end of the body of the diode that's not on the other end. And that denotes that this is our um, negative um, connection for the diode. And the other end is the positive. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect that um, in such a way. So we have our um, positive and negative. So it's in forward bias. Another helpful tip if you forget about the, the little stripe rule is that the symbol for the diode kind of hints at that. This sort of horizontal stripe here um, is at the negative end and it corresponds with that stripe on the body there so that's useful to remember as well if you ever forget so there's our circuit completed um, we just need a power supply here and all i'm going to do is i'm going to connect that battery um, to the top oops to the top and bottom rails respectively um, this battery snap doesn't stay in place too well but hopefully we'll get away with it so there's our circuit all we need to do now is connect our battery before I do that, just a word of caution here. Um, which resistance have I picked? I've just put a, a resistor in there. This is a 33K resistor. 
And what I'm going to do, I'll just make an aside here um, to explain the sort of process that I'm going to go through. I'll, I'll do that by just drawing a table very quickly. What I want to do is I'm going to use a range of resistors we mentioned at the start. And I'm starting with 33K in this instance. You don't have to start with exactly the same value, but quite a, a large resistor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt a range of values and decrease those resistances. Um, in my case, probably the lowest that I would go to is 470 ohms. So we're going from 33K, 33,000 down to 470. And each time I'm going to do that, I'm going to take a couple of measurements. I'm going to measure the voltage across the resistor, which I'm going to call VR. And I'm going to me measure the voltage across the diode, which I called VD. So in the diagram, what I'm doing is something like this. I'm measuring the voltage across the resistor, VR and I'm measuring the voltage across the diode, VD. And to do that, I'm just going to use an ordinary multimeter. You can pick one of these up for five or ten pounds. Um, they're not expensive and they do the job, in our case, perfectly well. There's one more column that I've left blank here, um, but I'm going to come back to that in just a moment. So let's go ahead and take some measurements. The reason I brought up these resistor values is to make sure that we're using a resistance that's high enough to not damage the diode. So if the resistance is too low, then I'm going to get quite large currents flowing through this circuit. I'm not going to go lower than 470 ohms with a 9 volt battery, which is fine. Um, but just be aware, don't just put a random resistor in that might have a very, very low resistance um, because we're, we're at risk of, of causing some damage there. So here's my battery, I'm going to connect that in place and now hopefully there's current flowing in this circuit. We'll soon find out because I'm going to use the multimeter here and I'm going to, uh, to set that to the 20 volt range, which we'll do for our purposes um, to take some measurements today. And all I'm going to do is hopefully uh, by using the probes, I'm going to take some measurements um, across the resistor. So I get 8.45 volts across the resistor and across the diode, I get 0.54, 8.45. Then we had 0.54 for the voltage across the resistor and the voltage across the diode respectively. OK, this last column that I mentioned just briefly, uh, we're going to calculate the current I. And to do that, I don't have, I could measure current, um, but I'm not going to, I don't need to, because I know the voltage across the resistor and I know the resistance of the resistor. So what we can do is we can calculate the current, which is going to be just using Ohm's law, VR over R, the voltage across the resistance over the, the resistance itself. And so what I can do is I can calculate these currents after the fact. I'm not going to do that now. We'll do that later. We'll just take some measurements for now. Um, let's take another measurement. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm just going to disconnect the battery from the circuit there while I'm making some changes. For this circuit, it doesn't really matter. Um, but in, in more sort of complex circuits, it's a good idea when you're not taking measurements um, to disconnect that so that we're not wasting energy or we're not risking damaging any components or anything by um, playing around with the circuit while it's still connected. I'm going to take that 33k resistance out. I'm going to put a 10k resistance in instead. So I've decreased the resistance. So from the top rail there to the diode, we've got our 10k. Um, let's reconnect the power supply now. So we should hopefully be able to take another set of results. Let's have a look. Um, again, notice when I'm taking these results here, we've got our red and black um, probes, red to the top for positive to correspond with the, the red 
um, connection there, black to the bottom. And we get 8.38. I'll write these straight down this time because I'll forget. Um, so our new resistance is 10K. We have 8.38. And then the voltage across the diode, again, red to the top, black to the bottom. We have 0 0.59. So again, 0 0.59. Um, if I'm talking about the direction of those probes, if I reverse them, I would just get a negative result. Um, you can see there. So it's just a question of polarity to have those in the right direction there. Um, hopefully you get the idea. It's simply a case of just replacing with more resistor values now. I'm going to jump ahead and show you some of the completed results and we'll calculate some currents as well and hopefully plot a graph that shows us the characteristic curve. Okay, so I've taken some more measurements and now I'm just in Microsoft Excel. I'll zoom in just a little bit so you can uh, see a little bit clearer. What I've done here is I've, here's my sort of range of resistors that I mentioned before. Um, there's not much rhyme or reason to this, but I've just sort of tried to pick a range of sort of orders of magnitude, um, 33K, 10K, 8.2K, 3.9, 1.2, 1K, and then 470 ohms to finish with there. And for each of those, I've, I've measured uh, the voltage across the resistor VR and the voltage across the diode, which I've called VD. So what I want to do is just in Excel, um, or you can use any equivalent sort of spreadsheet software, I want to try and produce a graph of that diode characteristic. And for that, we need to calculate the current flowing through the circuit. Um, so what I'm going to do in, in this case is I'm going to use formulas in, in Microsoft Excel to do that automatically. One thing I am going to need to do is I'm going to have to convert these um, resistances here rather than talking about K, 10K and so on, um, which Excel won't understand. I'll have to convert those all into ohms as just a plain number for each of them. So 33K, I should be saying 33 thousand and so on and so forth so 10k becomes 10 thousand all the way down like so okay so i've done that now for all of those values and what i'm going to do is i'm going to calculate the current flowing through the circuit and the way i'm going to do that is just add another column here this is going to be my current in amps so i'll call it i um, brackets a these voltages are both in volts as well. I can add the, the units there. Um, and all I'm going to do is, in Excel, because I'm asking Excel to perform a calculation, we're going to start the um, the, the function or the the, um, the cell with, it, with an equals. So I'm asking Excel to calculate something equals. And what I'm going to do is, very simply, I'm going to calculate the current flowing through the resistor. And I'm going to do that using Ohm's law. So current is voltage divided by resistance. Well, I know the voltage across the resistor and I know the resistance of the resistor. So all I need to do is equals VR, the voltage across the resistor, divided by, so I'm just using a forward slash there, the resistance. So voltage divided by resistance. And I just press enter and I get a result. So the advantage of doing this in Excel is I can just grab that little bottom corner there and I can drag that bottom right corner all the way down and it should complete the calculations for each. Okay, so just a couple of things here. First of all, what we've done is calculated the current flowing through the resistor. Well, we're talking about the diode in this practical and we want to sort of plot the diode characteristic, but that's fine because remember this is a series circuit. So whatever current flows through the resistor must be the same current that flows through the diode. So even though we've used the, the resistance and the resistance voltage across the resistor to calculate this current, it's still the same current as applies to the diode as well. The second thing is you'll notice that these currents are quite small, they're in amps. And what we can, we can leave them like this, there's nothing wrong with that, but what I could do is add another column here um, for milliamps. And milliamps 
are just going to be a factor of a thousand times greater. So all I'm going to say is equals, again, I'm asking Excel to calculate this, equals a thousand multiplied by, just using the asterisk, uh, the current in amps. And now we've got it in milliamps. And these numbers are a little bit more sort of reasonable. So the last thing we're going to do is plot our graph. And to do that, I'm going to plot the voltage across the diode on the x-axis and the current up the y-axis. And so to do that very easily, all I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the column header there, the C, row C in my case, it doesn't matter what row you're in, but that, that row for VD, I'm going to highlight that column. I'm going to hold down control on my keyboard and I'm going to highlight column E as well for the current. So I've highlighted the voltage across the diode and the current and then I'm going to insert a graph and the type of graph that I'm going to use is in this case just a scatter graph and I have a few options um, but the one I'm going to pick is uh, the, the one with the, that has points and a, and a smooth curve um, joining those points and so oops I've just moved something there I've produced my graph there I'm just going to move this to the side here and hopefully what we can see is we're demonstrating this characteristic my results aren't great there's a little bit of um, of inaccuracy maybe or error when I've when I've taken those measurements but you can hopefully see that activation voltage at around about 0 0.6 0 0.65 volts and then we get that increase in current that we mentioned before um, what I can do with this graph is make it look a little bit more sensible I'm just gonna you can do these manually by adding chart elements we can add titles and whatnot but also on Excel there's this quick layout I'm just gonna pick the first one here and it adds a, a couple of things automatically. Uh, we've got our x-axis, which in our case is, I'll try and edit that without moving it, is the voltage across the diode, so V, D, measured in volts. And then up the side here, we've got our current I in milliamps. And I'll just give this a sort of more sensible title, diode, um, forward, bias, characteristic and we'll get rid of that there this little trend line marker this key we don't really need so we can get rid of that as well so there's our graph and hopefully this video has been useful to demonstrate how just with a, a few components and a breadboard we can still demonstrate that diode characteristic experimentally